and welcome to this week's preview show where BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple is back alongside me as we look ahead to this weekend's FA Cup fixture. Here's what's coming up today. We'll discuss Tuesday's superb 3-1 win against Brighton. We'll also be joined by Arthur Boric here at Vitality Stadium. And finally, we will look ahead to that game on Monday night against Arsenal in the FA Cup. But first, we're going to start back at Tuesday night and that fantastic win against Brighton. Let's take a look at the goals. Billing up to the halfway line for the Cherries now. As they wave them on, looking for Callum Wilson down the centre. Dunks head a clear. Solanke takes it down, knocks it to Harry Wilson in the area. Harry Wilson! The Cherries' top scorer comes up trumps. And Bournemouth take the lead. And boy, did they need that. Nine minutes till half time. Can they go on from here? Bournemouth one, Brighton nil. Five minutes till the break. Harry Wilson's goal for the Cherries separates the sides. Rico with the corner from this near side towards the near post. It's gone past everyone. It's 2 0. It's an own goal. Turned into his own net on the goal line by Pascal Gross. Rico's corner caused the problem, and the Cherries suddenly, through Brighton's misdemeanours, find themselves two up. Billing this time snuffs out another Brighton attack and Wilson feeds Solanke and now Solanke up to halfway with Adam Smith careering up outside of him Callum Wilson looking to make a run it's run through for Callum Wilson can he round the keeper? Callum Wilson! His Premier League goal drought ends and what a time to do it he's probably put the game to bed and the Cherries with three goals careering towards three massive points down the bottom end of the Premier League Here's Mope for Brighton, right side of the penalty area. Alzate floats one in, Francis heads it clear. Aaron Moyes to the box, nice bit of control, and then Moyes scores in off the right-hand post. The Cherries' clean sheet is punctured, and Aaron Moy once again has a say against the Cherries, and there are nine minutes left, and it is 3-1 in the Cherries' favour. Well, a superb victory under the lights there. Chris, it was it was very much needed, wasn't it? And it was a superb performance all round. First of all, it's nice to have some highlights back on the it previous is, show because we've been standing here going, well, we won't look at that one again. <laughs> Whereas it's nice to actually have something to show. Um, I mean, yes, as you say, much needed. App, I mean, what a huge result that was. Um, and every, the feel-good factor around the place afterwards, it was just everybody letting out that massive sigh of relief, I think. And um, quickly, we'll contextualise it by saying it's one result and that's the message from the players this week and the manager is that it's one game. What it has done, of course, is that with other teams slipping up down the bottom of the table and... Um, um, one or two others getting away, actually, as well, I think, of Burnley and Newcastle, who just snuck away a little bit. Um, it really has suddenly got tight between, what, five or six teams down the bottom. So it was a huge three points. Um, and just great to see. And the first half hour was a bit, not shaky, but it was, you know, nip and tuck. And Brighton had a lot of the ball and things weren't quite clicking. And then as soon as Diego Rico hit the side netting, I'm not sure what it was about that that just inspired everything to uh, to come together. So, yeah, it, it, it was a great performance. It, so many good individual performances. You could go through the whole team. Um, and from a Brighton point of view, the way they faded away, I'd be... A, I mean, we'd heard one or two things from their local press before the game about how they've just lost their way. I'd be a bit worried if I was their fans because um, they could be heading towards trouble. That first goal, it was absolutely crucial, wasn't it? You know, you mentioned Diego Rico. He hit the side netting just before Aaron Ramsdale made an absolutely crucial save. And it was all about that first goal. We got it and, you know, went on to score another. Yeah, you're absolutely right to, to mention that save because that Schmeichel-esque save down the far end there from Aaron Ramsdale was a, a magnificent save. And at that moment, if that goes in 1-0 down, you know, the confidence, I, I imagine, this was starting to build saps away. The, the sort of angst in the stands starts to grow. Um, so that was a huge turning point, I think, potentially of the season. You know, if we're standing here in a couple of weeks and Bournemouth have won a couple more league games, then you could look at that and say that's a big turning point for the campaign, not just for that game. But yeah, to, to go to another end and score. Harry Wilson back on the score sheet, has scored most of his goals away. He said it was nice to get one here. Only that Man City free kick he'd got here this season before that one. So yeah, good finish, what was needed at the time. Then the own goal slash the one that Callum's trying to claim, which I'm, I'm still not... I mean, I called it as an own goal straight away from the angle that we had on the far side. I think he might have as well. <laughs> I think he's... Uh, the fact he was sort of shaking his head or whatever nearly gave it away. But uh, the fact he went on to score that goal later on was, was obviously huge for him. He said... I just spoke to him earlier on. He said, I wanted to claim a proper goal, not claim a, a scrappy own goal when you haven't scored for a while. So, um, yeah, all in all, just... Um, you think of individuals to mention Dom Solanke was, you know, mm. by far his best game for the club. 
I mean, we've mentioned Ramsdale already, but what a string of saves he made. In the second half as well, oh. you know, there were some brilliant ones later on. Ah, oh, fantastic saves. And, you know, again, if, if Brighton sort of get back in the game 20 minutes earlier or 15 minutes earlier, that's, that could be quite a nervous last 20. So uh, the fact he kept him out for, you know, until what, eight or nine minutes to go. Um, he was fuming about not keeping a clean sheet. Diego Rico got an absolute earful, I think, for the uh, for sort of not quite contesting a challenge that led to the goal. But um, and quite right that Aaron Ramsdale got highlighted on match of the day. You know, he got his own little slot on match of the day, highlighting how how good he's been, and that all have catapulted him right into the consciousness of well, hopefully Gareth Southgate was watching. And you know, you mentioned you know he was so annoyed at the fact that he hadn't kept a clean sheet, but it goes to show how high those standards <coughs> were because he's made some brilliant saves throughout the game. He's kept his team in it yet the first thing on his mind when the game was finished is that he didn't keep a clean sheet and you know it, it shows the high standards that he's setting himself and that's the one thing that he mentioned in the interview he mentioned not keeping a clean sheet before talking about any of the saves he made which I wouldn't expect a goalkeeper to come out and say what about all those saves I made but still you know the fact he was angry about the clean sheet is uh, and they probably you know I think they probably deserve one for the way they defended overall having seen off that first half hour it was a bit of a as Willow would call it, my commentary colleague, a bit of a moonshot from Aaron Moy that, you know, ends up going in. But, um, you know, all in all, there were some great blocks and there was some heroic defending, I think, of the Lewis Dunk chance down this end where, um, you know, Ake and Francis were throwing himself in the way. The Ake block at the other end as well after Ramsdale made a save. So, yeah, all in all, just, um, just a, a wholehearted effort. And the players grew from the confidence they found on the pitch. The fans grew and then they sort of bounced off each other. Um, and all in all, yeah, great night, comfortable win. And just finally, we briefly mentioned Callum Wilson, but that can do wonders for his confidence now. And I think all fans will be hoping that he can go on a, a little streak and, you know, find the back of the net. Again, the, the, the type of goal he scored as well, uh, not, not just, uh, you know, one he shanked that's gone in from three yards, a bit of composure. There was a little bit of a break that, that went from nicely off the defender. But once he got in there from Dom Solanke's sort of vision, um, you know, a nice little touch to the right, round the keeper, rolling it in. That's, uh, that's a striker that sort of, I guess shows he's probably got a bit more confidence than we thought he had because that was a, a good striker's goal. Could easily have you know tried to shoot early and, and blown it. Uh, had the composure to go around the keeper. And, and talking of composure, Solanke's assist for Harry Wilson's goal. You know could easily have shot, um, but instead chose the right pass. As strikers looking for goals, you can sometimes make the wrong decisions. But you know Solanke there and Callum with his goal, you know got their decisions spot on. Strikers looking for goals indeed. Now Callum Wilson, he got that goal on Tuesday night and he spoke to AFC BTV after the game. Here's what he had to say. So I guess we'll start at the end with your goal. Tell us all about it. Uh, yeah, obviously, Dom, you know, played a great slip ball and the defenders kind of touched it onto me. But it was a touch where he's gone into my path, really. Um, trademark, go around the goalie, slip it in. Um, obviously, w w the first one is, the second one is mine as well, for, we for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, it's not been given yet on Sky, but I'm, I'm sure that it'll get overturned, for sure. So in all seriousness, tell us about that. The, the Cherry's the second goal, whether it's your goal or not. Did you score that goal? For sure. Um, you know, I've touched it onto the defender. Um, he's fouling the goal with the ball, but nevertheless, it's on target. So surely it's get given as mine. Yeah. And of course, when you've had a bit of a drought, I'm sorry to say, then people make headlines. People say all sorts of things. What's it like when you break that duck? Um, sweet, you know. I like proving doubters wrong. Um, people write you off as a team, as an individual. Um, so yeah, it's, for me, it's just a case of sticking to what I do, working hard for the team, and then um, you get your rewards like tonight. And does, does the confidence suffer? Do you have moments like when you went through on goal for the second goal, you made that look incredibly easy, but is there any sort of difference in how you're feeling? No, um, you know, just working hard to get that chance. Um, sometimes it's just not, f don't fall for you, you know, you'll go to the front post, the ball will go to the back and vice versa. And when you're on form, it tends to find you. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously, like I say, um, always stay ice cold in front of goal. Whether you have not scored for however many games or, or not, and um, the confidence from the first, you know, um, then they got the second, which is nice. Yeah. And I'm sure we'd be desperate to send this into a streak now. You've had plenty of streaks in the past. How do you make sure that that sort of happens for you? Um, just, just by, like I say, just focusing on what gets your goals, and that's the process of, you know, working hard and and. Um, putting yourself on the line for the team first and foremost and then like I say you get your rewards on the back of that. And contrast today with Saturday at Carroll Road and the feeling then and the feeling now? Yeah it's uh, you know like chalk and cheese really, um, frustrated obviously last weekend um, but the positive thing was that we had a game within a few days to turn it around so um, yeah it was massive that we, we got back to winning ways today. And the supporters, they were shouting for a goal machine again. That might be you. And yeah. it must have been real, a real pleasure to play in front of such a boisterous atmosphere like that. Yeah, um, you know, it's all about getting them on side and getting them behind us. Um, 
you know, we feed off them, they feed off us. And um, once the first goal gone in, they got behind us and yeah, it sort of lifted us as a, as a team, as a squad then to sort of give more and, and push on. And um, then where we was, we was getting success because they were getting behind us. So um, yeah, it works both ways. And, and, and yeah, obviously they're like the, the 12th man and we, and we need them every game. I'm sure you and the rest of the squad can't wait till Arsenal now. Yeah, um, you know, obviously a cup run is always nice as well. Um, We've got our, our win tonight, um, so we can sort of just look to look to the cup now before our next um, next league game as well, which is massive as well. Well, that was Callum Wilson speaking after Tuesday's superb win. Now then, as you can see, we have been joined by first team goalkeeper Arta Boric. Arta, thank you for joining us. It was a, a fantastic win on Tuesday night. The mood must be superb in the camp. Yeah, that's true. That was three points we needed. And yeah, that wins. I hope it's going to change our season and uh, we're going to bounce. We're going to go back to the road we've been before, which means winning. And Aaron Ramsdale, he was superb on Tuesday night. And at the final whistle, we saw you, you went straight over to him, running over to congratulate him on his performance. Yeah. Uh, in a couple of words, yeah, that was his win. Although somebody else scored in goals, you know that there's a there's a guy in a goal who have done absolutely fantastic, uh, incredible saves, and uh, yeah, I'm very proud of him. And you know, we've seen it at Chelsea. We've seen you do the same. Go over to him straight at the full time whistle to congratulate him. He he came on the show a couple of weeks ago, and you know, he said that the goalkeeper unit is is so tight. And is that something that you would agree with? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that's a good thing, although we, we are involved in the in a five footer spot, uh, but uh, it's very good to to have some competition, especially in a young age as well. And uh, yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's a very good environment to be with. And you know, he said the other day he learned so much off you in training in the in the dressing room, and almost sees you I as the good stuff. Then. All the good stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and sees you as a as a third coach. You know, how does that that make you feel? Uh, old, first of all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, if you look look at me and and see something good, uh, you know, I don't mind if he learns. But uh, he needs to be himself. He knows uh, what to do right and. You know, it's, it's it's bad moves as well. So uh, it's a, it's a learning curve just now for him, early stage in his career. And I hope uh, I can I can be a, a, a I don't know, let's say a, a help. And do you have many conversations with him? You know about things that he does, things that he can improve on, and, and kind of have your input. <sighs> That's a very individual thing, you know, and uh, he needs to learn from the games and 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 that's that's the main thing uh, the main thing is well how are we going to co cope with the pressure you can see he's doing well and uh, yeah, he's enjoying fl playing football and just a word on the likes of mark travers will dennis they seem so enthusiastic they're young they're talented at, you know goalkeeping at afc bournemouth is it's looking positive isn't it it is very positive yeah they look look uh, very very good uh, it's a bright future ahead of them and uh, well, what can, I, what can I say? I just, just think they need to, they need to work hard, and 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 a good thing is going to come up. And you know, you mentioned that competition for places. Do you think that's something that you know can improve you? You're all fighting for that same spot, and you know, you, you're driving each other to be better. Yeah, that's what I believe. Yeah, I learned through the many years of my adventure with the football. Yeah, that's that's very helpful, and and that's what you need in the football. Yeah. Well, Arta, thank you very much for joining us. We all wish you the best for the rest of the season. Now then, our attention turns to Monday's FA Cup game against Arsenal. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been nice to see players with that that feeling of winning and enjoying life. And yeah, everything looks different when you win. So um, I was delighted for the players on Tuesday. They gave everything to the match and got rewarded with a, a massive win. And I think we've got to do the work on the back of that win to um, consolidate it and use it to push us forward. Uh, it was it was a, a big moment in our season in, in lots of different ways. It was so important we won here at home and the crowd uh, were so good with us and feeling that interaction with them I think is so powerful. We're going to need them more than ever now between now and the run-in to, to really make the difference here at home and hopefully that's the first step to that happening. Yeah, we have. I think... Um, I always back the squad and I always back the players that we pick to be good enough to win the uh, respective game. I think we'll look at who we have fit and available. We have a very small squad to pick from. So we'll wait and see what team is available. Um, we do have a couple of injury concerns. I won't go into individual names, but we have a couple of players that are struggling. 
Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. Chris, we've got a, a break from the Premier League. We've got fond memories of the, the last round in the FA Cup and fans will be hoping it's a, another good weekend for us. Yeah, um, one win in the in the column. Win again, I think, is the next uh, the next message really is because, yes, there's no Premier League points up for grabs, but in terms of momentum and mindset and everything else, it'll be great to, to get a cup result. Um, Bournemouth do have a habit of pulling out big guns in the cup, don't they? I think of drawing Liverpool two or three years in a row in the League Cup and things going back a few years and Chelsea seemingly every single year uh, in the League Cup as well and now Arsenal in the FA Cup. So they have been handed a few ties um, of, of sort of strength. But here, you know, I think Bournemouth have got a good chance of, of what causing what would be an upset, certainly on paper. Um, obviously, recent memories of playing Arsenal on Boxing Day here, which is a game Bournemouth possibly would look at and say they could have won, maybe should have won. And Mikel Arteta's team are just continuing to evolve. That was his first game in charge, of course. Um, so they've they've solidified. They haven't lost away since then. I think they're six or seven unbeaten away from home, drawn their last five. Uh, don't fancy a draw this time around because a replay would be in the winter break, which I know neither manager is particularly pleased about. So, um, yeah. Uh, it's 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 all set up to be a great tie. The fact it's been moved for TV to Monday night under the lights, I think, yeah. just adds that little bit extra as well, rather than being sort of Sunday at four Monday night. I think it's, it could be a cracker. And Mikel Arteta, he's now had some time to, you know, work with his team, play with his team before it was his first game in charge. What have you made of them, you know, over the last six weeks or so? Well, they've, they've certainly shown they've got some fighting spirit. You know, coming back the other day at Chelsea with 10 men to get a great draw. Um, you know, as a result of that, David Luiz won't be playing for sure. Aubameyang, of course, is still suspended for that, that nasty tackle up to Palace. So there's two big guns that won't play. Luiz played in the last round, Aubameyang didn't. And when you look at the team that... Arteta played in the last round against Leeds and they made pretty hard work of beating Leeds, but it was a team that had Lacazette, it had Ozil, it had Xhaka, it had Pepe. Um, you know, they had a lot of big guns playing in that game. David Luiz played as well. Um, so yeah, they, they made, I think, five or six changes, but still, it was a seriously strong team. So I think both teams will go probably two thirds strong, I would imagine. Eddie's got one or two issues with people who aren't fit, which we'll talk about in a minute. But in terms of Arsenal, you know, I think, Silverware, you've got to say, as the new manager coming into a big club, it's a great chance for him to, to get on a run and, and potentially get some silverware because the Premier League, you know, everyone's chasing that fourth place um, spot on a European spot. But for him, uh, I think getting a, a trophy in the cabinet, a bit like Mourinho at Spurs, very similar. Uh, I imagine they'll be sort of putting a few eggs in the FA Cup basket. So it'll be great to see a, a strong Arsenal team with one or two youngsters in it as well. Um, and it'll be great not to see Aubameyang because he does tend to score against Bournemouth. And you say it'll be great to see the Arsenal team. What about the Bournemouth team? You've just spoken to Eddie Howe this morning. What did he have to say on the injury front? Yeah, uh, a little bit of grey area at the moment. I think there's one or two who are carrying knocks. The ones he quoted were Dom Solanke. He's got a bit of a, a problem with his toe. Uh, Simon Francis has got a sore knee. I think Callum Wilson had a bit of a sore knee. Um, there's, there's, there's two or three, I think, who are... Uh, uh, probably going to have to be managed. You think of Junior Stanis, that's who's still a couple of weeks away. Um, but opportunities for the likes of Jack Simpson, who obviously came in the last round, Andrew Sermon, who came in in the last round. Um, Dan Gosling got left out the other day, so I imagine we'll see him. Steve Cook didn't play the other day, so I, I imagine we'll probably see him. Um, not a lot of choice at the back, of course, defensively. Um, the one question mark is Lloyd Kelly. I'd, I'd, I thought, having been on the bench the other day, that he might well be involved. I'm not sure that he will be. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's... A balancing act for sure for Eddie. He's got, to be fair, the games are quite nicely spaced out and that you've had a, a, what, a Tuesday night, then a Monday and then a Saturday. So it's not like you're having to play midweek in between those matches. So, yeah, I think he'll, he said he'll make, <coughs> excuse me, he'll make changes, but not wholesale changes um, because ultimately it's a, a reasonable opportunity to try and get through. Absolutely, and, and you mentioned Jack Simpson there, a good opportunity for him. Also, Sam Surridge, fans haven't seen too much of him since he's come back from loan, but you know he scored goals at Swansea, and, and again, Monday night under the lights could be another really good opportunity for him. Yeah, it's strange that we haven't seen more of him. Um, I just wonder if, they're, if he's been brought back basically as cover, um, and we may see him go out on loan again. Um, that was one of the things that was mooted as to, you know, we'll see what happens over the month. It probably depends on whether they bring somebody in, which I know they're trying very hard to do. A couple of players have been linked in the uh, the press from the overseas market. Um, again, they're, they're, I know they're working very hard in the background, but nothing concrete to report at the moment. So, yeah, for Sam Surridge, I mean, he's probably absolutely chomping at the bit to get a chance. If Callum and Dom Solanke have got little knocks, I'm absolutely sure they won't be risked. So maybe it is an opportunity for, for Sam, which would be great to see him in a, a live TV game against Arsenal. Great opportunity. And of course, he actually made his Premier League debut at Arsenal. Came on for a few minutes towards the end of the Emirates last season so we um, we won't no we won't um, but yeah so maybe we'll, maybe we'll see Sam as well um, Gavin Kilkenny was on the bench in the last round didn't start so yeah I think youngsters wise probably Simpson Surridge it's probably going to be it 
well, it's going to be an exciting weekend of cup football. If you are coming to Vitality Stadium, then we wish you a safe journey. If not, make sure you listen to Chris and Willow on BBC Radio Solent for the latest updates. Bye for now.